All right, today we're looking at welder qualification test plates and mostly that backing bar. We're gonna look at three different ways of removing that backing bar. So if you're starting out or maybe you've been at it for a while, chances are you're familiar with this backing bar and processing this plate, cutting it up into strips, bending it, checking to see for defects, all that stuff. The fact is that we are one of the most tested trades out there. Unless you're somebody that got lucky and has always had your plates sent out for x-ray, then you didn't have to process them. All right, so the first method we're gonna look at is milling that backing bar off. You're pretty lucky if you've got one of these in your shop because not all shops have them. This is probably the easiest way of doing this. We're gonna swipe that down one swipe at a time, usually about 30 thousandth of an inch until you get rid of it completely. Once you're done, you can easily take that over to the saw now and start cutting those into coupons or straps. Now, regardless of the method we use to remove that backing bar, be sure you make reference to that standard, whether it be AWS or CWB. All too often I see my students fail, the inspector comes in, they do really well on the weld, and they go and they cut their straps or their coupons way too short, they grind way too thin, and they end up failing on that end. Now the fact is that some inspectors can be more lenient than others, some follow it by the T, follow that standard by the T, others are a little bit more flexible depending on whether you're a student or you know, you've been experienced for a while. However, we wanna to stick to that standard as close as we can to make sure that we don't get any failures. All right, option number two for removing that backing bar is the oxy fuel torch. So we're actually gonna blow that backing bar off. We usually use that oxy fuel for cutting or for heating, but believe it or not, we're not gonna be doing any cutting on that backing bar. We're actually gonna blow that material away. So we're gonna put a crap load of heat in that backing bar, and then we're gonna start skimming that thing. So we're gonna set our oxy fuel torch to about 25 pounds of oxygen and between five and seven acetylene. All right, as mentioned, we're gonna start by putting a whole bunch of heat into that backing bar. Heat is your friend here. We don't wanna skim on this part. Now this may take a little bit of practice. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, you're feeling like you might gouge a little bit, you're better off leaving a little bit of material on there and then just grinding the rest with the angle grinder. Now once you've got that whole backing bar completed, you're gonna see a whole bunch of slag that's gonna be easy to remove. We can remove that with a chipping hammer and then we finish it off with the flapper wheel. Get that nice and shiny prep for cutting our coupons. Right, once you got that backing bar off, you've got the torch out already. Chances are you're probably gonna use it to cut your coupons, your one and a half inch or whatever it is, your standard. But the main thing is that we follow that standard. I always encourage to use a straight edge if you can't keep your hand steady. Otherwise, let's just freehand it and get that practice in. Now, once you've got your coupons all cut, we wanna clean them up one last time. We wanna clear off any slag, get rid of those sharp edges or anything like that. We wanna clean the cap clean the, the back side of it, whatever we got to do. We don't want to give that inspector any reason to poke around any further. Now, presentation is so important here. And always keep in mind, we want to follow that standard. We want to stick to that criteria. All right, option number three is a little bit less appealing, but if we don't have the saw, if we don't have a mill, we don't have a torch, we can definitely process this coupon for destructive testing. Now we're gonna get that angle grinder out, we're gonna get the zip cut, we're gonna get your hard disk, your flapper, we're gonna get it all out. And make sure you got that respirator because you're gonna create a whole bunch of dust. Now once we got that plate all cut up, we wanna discard those ends and we just wanna keep those three coupons. And the first thing I like to do is just to get it into the saw. If you don't have a saw, again, we're using that angle grinder, get that cutoff wheel, get that zip cut and start cutting your coupons out. In this case here, these are an inch and a half coupons. And I like to isolate them so that they're one by one. And then I'm gonna draw my lines on that backing bar. So there's an area on that backing bar that's fused with weld metal. We understand that. So is what we wanna do is we wanna cut off that excess on the outside, and we can do that one by one on each of them. Now, once those outside pieces are removed, we're gonna hit it hard with that angle grinder. This is where you're gonna create some dust, so get that respirator on. And then we're exactly where we left off, whether we're oxy fueling it or we're using the mill. We're able to process that, finish it off, tidy up those coupons, and bring it to the bender for destructive testing. All right, folks, there you have it. That's three ways on how to remove backing bar. Let me know in the comments how I'm doing. Maybe you do it differently. Maybe there's something I'd missed. I'd love to hear from you. Subscribe to the channel, 
and as always, keep those lenses clean.